everyone. This is ICO Talk. My name is Yelena, and today my guest is Noam Kopel, a CEO of DEV. Hello, Noam. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Yelena. It's great to be with you. I'm a big fan of your channel. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, then, uh, Noam, first of all, please tell us a few words about DEV, which is uh, Decentralized Autonomous Vehicles. Uh, what is it all about, and what is the main idea behind the project? Okay, so DEV is an open protocol for how the future of transportation should be. So that means a platform that's built on top of vehicles, enabling them to communicate with each other and to transact with each other and to communicate with users, um, basically enabling every user to then make use of every vehicle on that network. Okay, but will you please explain in more details what autonomous vehicles are meant here? Right. So uh, autonomous vehicles mean, means every vehicle that has capabilities to move around programmatically using code. So everyone knows about uh, autonomous cars and um, autonomous drones. And uh, these are vehicles that are coming to the market um, right now. Uh, autonomous cars are taking a bit longer than uh, the other vehicles. Uh, now we're seeing drones and we're seeing robots. And these are the types of companies that we're already working with to integrate the DAP protocol onto their vehicles. Okay, and will you please precise what will be the role of blockchain in the whole system? Right, so blockchain has two roles. Uh, role number one, it enables peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions between those vehicles and between the users. So if we want to build the platform uh, for decentralized transportation, the first uh, primary role of that network is to enable those vehicles and the users to transact directly without a company in the middle. Okay. So blockchain enables us to do that with smart contracts. And the second thing is that blockchain enables us using token economy to um, fund this project without needing to um, charge commissions and charge fees from the participating companies or users so that means a completely free and open source and fee-less system. Hmm. Okay. And uh, actually, I wonder uh, about the geography of the project. Uh, where uh, your system will be available, actually? In what countries? Because, you know, the uh, theme of the autonomous vehicle is rather new in most of the countries, you know? Absolutely. Well, with each and every country, there is a specific uh, legislation involving uh, drones and, and um, autonomous uh, vehicles. Uh, the nature of this project is global. And uh, what we're doing is in each country that uh, we're uh, identifying an opportunity to penetrate with one or more of our uh, alliance um, uh, members, uh, mm -hmm. we're using the vehicles and the areas in which we feel that we can uh, safely and legally operate it. It is our estimation that uh, gradually the legal ambience in uh, more and more countries will be more favorable to autonomous transportation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and are there actually other similar projects on the market? Right well, uh, no, there are no uh, similar projects that are uh, network uh, and, and open source networks. Uh, we've noticed a few um, manufacturers of vehicles starting to tokenize their specific products, their specific okay. vehicles, and um, while it's not the same thing uh, that we're doing. Well, yes. well, what are your main differences, yes. Uh -huh. So when a vehicle maker uh, tokenizes their specific vehicle, uh, that's their way of, um, uh, should I say, distributing uh, the equity and the asset of that vehicle between um, the purchases or purchasers of their token. So that means using their tokens, I can later make use of their vehicles, which is a great thing. But with the DAV network, uh, the DAV token is meant to enable usage of all the vehicles on the network. So that means mm -hmm. uh, one token to make use of any vehicle on the network. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, now please tell us a little bit more about the story of the project. When was it launched? Who's got the idea of it? Why have you decided to, to develop this particular idea? And actually, what do you have today? What is the current stage of development of uh, the project? Right, so I um, have been working on this project since the beginning of 2017, so that's about one year ago. Um, it was a result of a, a long and extensive research phase uh, that I did on, on blockchain and on AI and, um, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, 
Uh, I have been involved in cryptocurrency since 2011, and I've been looking for something exciting and, and world-changing to do ever since. And uh, identifying the convergence of these two trends, autonomous vehicles that are coming, and uh, blockchain is starting to grow and penetrate and enable us to do more and more things. Uh, that's where it hit me, and I started working on the project a year ago. Um, I wrote uh, the white paper detailing the plan and how we're going to go about it and started to recruit a team. And that's the most important um, key to success in my, uh, uh, in my view for any project, let alone this type of very, very ambitious uh, project. So I started really scouting uh, for the best, best people in every field that this project needs. Mm -hmm. And I feel that this is kind of uh, where we are now. So how many people are there in the team right now? So our team, including our uh, advisory board, are 20 people now. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, people from really top tier organizations such as um, Ethereum, such as Google, such as uh, NASA even. Um, our advisors come from um, organizations such as SAP and uh, General Motors mm -hmm. and a few others that are going to join us soon. And okay. this type of superstar power uh, is really, really needed to accomplish what we're aiming to do. Okay, okay. And now let's speak about the ICO. Uh, first of all, the soft cap and the hard cap. So our soft cap is $5 million and the hard cap is, is uh, currently at uh, $38 million. Um, we chose these uh, specific figures and it's really tough to make these decisions because um, you're dependent on so many factors when you do the financial projections for a token project. Um, what's the token going to be worth in a few years and what's Ether even going to be worth? So it's really, really different than any other financial projection. Uh, but we feel uh, comfortable in these figures that there are um, that they will enable us to do what we set out to do uh, with the relative um, um, convenient um, cushion of safety for everyone uh, involved, especially the contributors. Okay, okay, but anyway, uh, 38 million, yeah, uh, what for this particular sum uh, uh, in terms of the roadmap? Will you, will you tell us about the key milestones of development of the project? Absolutely, so we're currently on alpha stage. That means that uh, the DAV platform and the DAV open protocol is already public and uh, available to view on GitHub. Uh, we have a growing community of developers uh, that are very excited to work on it and improve it and add capabilities to it. Uh, we've already started working with companies uh, in the field of autonomous transportation mm -hmm. uh, to integrate that platform, uh, expand it to their needs and integrate it into their vehicles. Um, the roadmap uh, is fairly long term, as you can imagine, because this is uh, um, a project that not only is dependent on us, but on the progress of autonomous transportation as an sure, industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, the long term... Um, uh, goal is to integrate it into as many vehicles as possible in as many locations as possible for as many use cases as possible. And that means enabling users to pay uh, vehicles, enabling vehicles to pay other vehicles, and enabling developers to uh, come up with the innovative uh, things to do with that network. Okay, yeah. and by the way, uh, what is the volume of uh, the market today of autonomous vehicles? Do you know it? Yeah, so currently the vehicles that are out there actually operating are mostly drones. And we're seeing delivery drones uh, in Africa, we're seeing delivery drones in uh, Reykjavik, in uh, uh, Iceland. Um, the, the cap is not very large, it's, it's a, a few single, um, in the few single million uh, digits and sometimes a few dozens. Uh, but uh, the expectation is to start seeing more and more of that and also the first uh, autonomous cars. Uh, mm -hmm. on the roads uh, within two or three years, and that will significantly increase the, the cap and the activity for, for our second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what will be the key benefits for uh, your token holders? So the token is meant to be used for transportation purposes. Okay. So that means that as the network grows and as more and more participants enter, the token will, get, will be more and more uh, useful uh, in, in more use cases. So the token that is today used uh, to power a drone or for the drone to pay for its charging, uh, the same token will in a few years enable to hire a car uh, for an on-demand ride, 
and to send uh, cargo uh, even on, on ships from place to place. We actually have um, a pilot program with the autonomous boats using the DAF platform. Um, mm -hmm. So that is the main uh, value of the token and that is the main benefit of the token. It's, it's a token and we call it uh, one token to move anything anywhere. That's our goal and that's what we want to do with the token. Okay, great. Let's just for a second imagine the negative scenario. If you don't get uh, even the soft cap, what will happen with the project and when the, with the investors? If we don't reach the soft cap, then um, we will need to uh, cancel the public sale and um, return the funds to the public sale contributors, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So what do you personally think about the future of the ICO market, about its perspectives in the world? Well, ICOs are a powerful tool uh, I only see it growing. I only see it getting more and more abilities. Uh, obviously, it has its flaws. It has its bugs. Uh, but like generally, cryptocurrency is just a better product than regular money, in my view. An ICO is a better product than regular funding and especially VC funding. So I see this segment growing. Uh, I see us as a community needing to be better at uh, protecting people, at giving them the tools to make decisions. Um, uh, hopefully as decentralized as possible. So these tools need to be uh, not necessarily regulation and, and just arbitrary laws, but actual uh, ways to transfer information that is valuable to investors and to help them um, as a community um, make good decisions. Okay, okay. And now in conclusion, in very brief, uh, why should I invest in DEF? Well, I can't tell you what to invest in uh, because I'm not a financial advisor and I don't uh, even trust those. But um, I, I can tell you why I invested a lot in, in this project. Um, and that is uh, money and time and um, life energy. Um, for me, I think it's a real opportunity to make a huge difference in the world. And it's really a unique opportunity to apply blockchain and apply decentralization on a huge, huge vertical, which is the transportation industry. So I think uh, this is the most uh, attractive quality for this project. Uh, two huge converging trends, autonomous transportation and blockchain coming together, presenting a big opportunity. Okay, okay, Noam, then thank you so much for being with us today and for this interview, thank you. Thank you, Yelena. Okay, and I remind you that today my guest was Noam Kopel, a CEO of DEF. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch more interesting videos. Bye-bye.